The Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is The Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? I am pumped. <laughs> I am pumped. I got Tommy Green in studio. <laughs> Dude, it's been a long time. Yes, it's been a few years. Last time I was with you, we were out in the parking lot of the radio studio praying, and yes. you were with, who else was with us? It was me, you. Yeah, Kellen, my homie Kellen. Kellen. And Brandon, my homie. Kellen. Brandon, Kellen Criswell and Brandon yes. Kennedy, dude. Yes. The homies. Yes, Just yes. <laughs> I was trying to remember this little squad. Yeah. And we were praying. That was right before the coronavirus and all that. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was like a good, gosh, it was 11, 12 months months before wasn't it? dude i don't know when what year was that it, dude everything's kind of a blur over these last hey, couple of years know how it's going to be 2022 in like five days how did this happen i know we've oh. been busy we've been busy we, we've been busy working on a lot of projects i know you got a lot of projects yeah going on i want to talk about but just for the listeners that don't know who tommy is tommy green is the uh singer of sleeping giant yes. the band and you should definitely look it up go to <laughs> just google it look it up and uh, I have a lot of friends that they'll, they'll send me like every once in a while because they know we're friends. They'll be in the gym or whatever. And they're like, look at look what I'm listening to because <laughs> the music's sick or skating or anything. Yes. Look it up. But you also have other music projects mm -hmm. that you've been working on. Yes. A couple of different projects. You got a new app that's going to be uh, amazing that yes. we're going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, any other things you want to talk about? I just want to I want to hear All what's going stuff. on. Listen, you have a lot of fan, you have a huge fan base and people want to know what's in your head. So okay. I want and your heart. So I want no. you to just talk about everything that you're working on today, God, everything, and just let's just let the Holy Spirit flow. Okay. Well, first off, I would say thank you for real. Thank you for having me on. Um, the the my my big the big project that brings me out here is um, a, a brand new independent social media app that's based in Utah, came to me. The last time I was on your show, we talked about my big run and yep. run against traffic yep. to follow up because I feel like, like a lot of people through the pandemic, through these last couple of years, a lot of us got the wind knocked out of us <clears throat> momentum wise in our life, like so many challenges. We were like guns blazing, let's go, we're gonna do all this stuff. Yep. And then the whole world goes into triage. We can't get together. We can't run. We can't do, you know, it's like, it's crazy. And so we were approached by a brand new social media platform called Pivot. And they basically said from December to January 11th, for every single free download of this app, mm -hmm. we're giving a dollar to your foundation. And so I just went on the war path of like, help me promote this thing because most of the people I talk to are super irritated and bummed out and disappointed by the current social media climate and what it's doing to people. Yeah. And it's nice to see from the jump, this company said, we want social media to be something better. We want to take a stand for um, a predator free zone. Mm -hmm. We want the good guys into the social media space before all the creeps show up. Yep. And we, from the very beginning are going to take a stand and say, social media can be a, a force for good. So, but I want before you yeah. go on. But I want to talk about heart stuff. So I'm trying to like do yeah. my like, well, yo, we do got, this we thing. We got an hour, so yes. we're gonna we're gonna go through everything. Okay. But your foundation, yes. The reason why people need to get behind this, and the reason why I'm behind it, and yeah, yeah, Ed yeah. and Sonny and all these other guys, is because you have your other non the nonprofit's called Run Against Traffic. Yes. So it's a nonprofit yes. that you ran uh, all the way from. I ran from the top of Utah to the bottom in 2018, and it was it was. Uh, 430 miles. It was uh, trying to be, I was trying to do a mar I was trying to do a marathon a day for two weeks because the goal was the long-term goal was we wanted to start a foundation that would function kind of like what Lance Armstrong did for cancer research. That fool disqualified himself. Mm -hmm. That foundation is still going, generating revenue for the cause. And so I thought, well, how do we build a mechanism big enough to do for human trafficking what this guy did for cancer. Right. And so I went, well, how do we get people involved? Running teams, cycling teams, people putting their shoes on and going around the block with their dog. Yep. How, do I, how do I invite everyone in to do this? If I run across the state, would that make it easier for me to look at any human and go, could you do a 5K? Could you do your first race? Could you do something? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to suffer like a lot of these. In some way, I wanted to... to share in, in suffer camp 
mm-hmm. and then look at people and say, do something. Right. And so that was the beginning journey of Run Against Traffic was this huge run from the top of Utah to the bottom. And the, and the vision of it was we want to create a foundation that has enough money and resources where all we do is we do our thing and write checks because there's a lot of people that want to help. What did I say? Church people would understand it, man. Evangelism is like way sexier yeah. than discipleship. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're going to save souls. Well, in human trafficking, that's tight. If you save all the souls, there's yeah. nowhere for them to go. Yep. So they're all going to go back. And right. so it was like, how do we solve that problem? Because Chrissy Green and me, when we first got involved in this, we saw people come out of the situation and we rejoiced and we were so excited and very shortly it all fell apart because of aftercare. Mm-hmm. So Run Against Traffic's thing was, let's build a mechanism to fund aftercare for right. survivors. That was the point. Yep. And so it was like community involvement and then raising funds. And, so- and there is, there is. I know a lot of different, um, I actually just got back from a human trafficking home in the, in, in the middle of America. Yeah. And I have a, several other friends that I've come in contact with that yes. have these different homes. Yep. They rescue them, but it's always about funding. Yes. So they, they do exist, yes, but it's the funds. So Bro. it's not just about catch, because it's almost like fishing, like a catch and release. Yep. If you don't got somewhere to put the fish or Bro. the person, they're going to go right back because that's all they know. Well, I was thinking about like this, and I'll, I, maybe I'll say this and that'll help. Yeah. Because I want it to be you know, encouraging and, and really building up for people that hear this. Is mm-hmm. at, the, at the beginning of Acts, this is, this is where I put it in my brain, is you see Christ heal um, someone through uh, the Apostle Paul. Maybe it's Peter. I can't remember. Can't remember the address. Acts three. You see a dude, and he's he's totally broken down. And by the end of it, God touches this broken life, and you see him walking, leaping, and praising God. Mm-hmm. And then he goes into the temple with the others. And right. so you see people physically healed, emotionally restored, right. mm-hmm. spiritually aligned, and going with them, mm-hmm. like in community. And right. so to take a broken life that's been manipulated, isolated, coerced, beat down deceived, addicted, all this stuff, and they're totally broken apart. They're shattered yeah. souls. Yeah. People, I think, are really uh, thinking that the minute we get them clear of the blast zone, yeah. somehow they're just going to automatically reacclimate. Yeah. And I think for any of us that have been saved, yeah. putting, putting our life back together, even in the process of discipleship, mm-hmm. It takes time, yeah. and we fail, yeah. and that's part of our process. It's like, so, it's, like, it's like any addiction or drugs or alcohol or stuff. It's like they, they give their life to God, but they still got to go face what they've, the yeah. damage they've done over the years or what damage has been done yeah. to them by other people. Uh, my, my personal journey in that respect is like, say I'm, <clears throat> when I first got really rescued by Christ, mm-hmm. um, wow, <laughs> well, so I just wanted to like go with him. And I think there's the story of the dude that gets, he gets healed in the graveyard, I think. And he's like, let me come with you. And, and Jesus says, stay, stay here, mm-hmm. tell the story here. Yep. And I think for me, that's like part of my journey in the hardcore scene is that a lot of my friends in Redlands, like when we first, when we got saved, we didn't leave. We just stayed, you know, yeah, and then we were yeah. able to tell the story there. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people that when they think rescue, they think salvation, they think being taken out of. And I think there's a lot of people, they have to do the work in the midst of it. Right. So they need support. And so like yeah. you said, like there's aftercare facilities in every state in the U.S. Some are awesome. Some are not awesome. True. And there needs to be more that are actually funded and they have the right staff and they can actually help these people long term. Yep. And they need a lot of money and a lot of time. Mm-hmm. So that's all. I'm not a pro. Yeah. I want to, like I said, I want to run and I want to write checks. That's all I want to do yeah. because yeah. I can't take on this thing and bring it home with my wife and children. Yeah. I, I want to make love with my wife and yeah. not think of this trauma. I yeah. want to look at my children and not be terrified. So I'm like, let the pros do what pros right. do. I just want to fund it. Yeah. And so for us, we thought the these these machine these racing teams these marathon things like fitness as a whole it's yep. like we can get people involved yeah easy. oh my gosh so yeah. many and so we just want to help find the good guys that are doing the best work and get them the resources and so that was kind of the journey but we thought it was going to take a long time yeah covid hits and like right when it launched dude right when it launched and then what we discovered was a bunch of the predatory behavior skyrocketed Um, online like 60% of it's on Facebook and like 18% of it's on Instagram and 12% on Snapchat. Like it went digital 
and and I am from the generation where like the internet's not real. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. you know, like that's not where I'm from. Yeah. And so I I was watching this and thinking like, I don't know what to do. And then it, it was interesting because on my big run, and I'll say this, this is connected to like what yeah, we've yeah. been going through is like on, as I'm training for this big run, Sleeping Giant had played its last show in February of 2018. I did my big run in October of 2018. Mm -hmm. In May of 2018, my little brother Connor died really suddenly. Mm. And, and I was like shattered by that. And then my wife and I, so me and Chrissy Green, my brother died. Uh, months later, her mom died. And in the midst of that, we had four miscarriages in two years. Dang. So uh, we just got gutted, bro. Like yeah. we really, it was like, we stepped into this like fight Yeah. and I'm from this like spot of like, you know, <laughs> I, when Connor passed, you know, I, I, I'm so like, I felt like such a moron for the Lord in some way, because I get the call at like 3 a.m. It's my little brother, Ryan. He's sobbing, you know, like Connor's dead, bro. And both me and Chrissy, the first thing we said is like, dude, don't turn anything off until we go pray. And that's not my family's culture. Like they totally, my dad would make fun of me and call me like a cult leader. Like he's not like a fan of this at all. <laughs> so we're thinking, no, man, like this is a time, like this is time for testimony, bro. Like we're going. And so I remember flying to Boston and I, I, I'm there in front of my little brother and my dad and I laid across my brother's body and I breathed on him and I prayed and he didn't come back, you know? And then within a short period of time, you're stepping start, out by faith. I bro, mean, Jesus says, trying it, dude. Like, exactly this, is what we've been, it. this is what we've been training for. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, exactly. this is the moment. Like, yeah. I'm like, come on. Yes. And so we, it felt like we just got confronted with death. Yeah. And death continued to win. Yeah. And, and then the world gets shut down. And so we just felt like, oh my gosh, we've lost it. We've lost our opportunity. Like yeah. we had this story, we had this thing we wanted to do. And now it's like, man, personally, and then, you know, globally, what do we do? Yeah. And then on the big run, I met a dude who, in the midst of my run, I'm just broken down. Brian, uh, Brian Welch, we did a podcast last night. And he's like, yeah, I showed up. He came and hung out with me for two days. On did the he? Run. Yeah, he flew out Sick. and he met me in the middle of nowhere, Utah. I had, I'd been running and by like day four or five, um, I was so broken down. That my left side just kind of like locked up. And so I was like I walking imagine. all weird. I was like all broken down. It looked horrible. <laughs> and so he showed up. He does like a donut in his rental <laughs> car. <laughs> gets out he's like what's up and i i was so relieved to just have a friend there because yeah. i it was it was just this little crew of us like in the middle of nowhere yeah so he hung out and we just walked and talked for a couple days um but in the midst of that journey i, I was in the middle of just some random day and um I, when i first got saved i'll say this too this is like my long way of getting there yeah i had i, I had a dream um i was tormented by nightmares i saw a lot of i think spiritual stuff when i was a little kid yeah and then when I got saved, I started dreaming again. Mm -hmm. And I, I would have dreams and they were so encouraging, almost like from the Lord. Like I felt like I was, I was being healed on some level um, in, in the experience. And I was blown away. So I, I just would receive, I felt like from the Holy Spirit, things in dreams, yeah. instruction or warning or correction or right. d healing, like deliverance. I'd get yeah. challenged by yeah. stuff and be like, whoa. And I, it would, you know, I felt like it was an avenue where the Lord was speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I remember I, I, after my brother died, I remember telling my son Rada, I was like, dude, we got to pray. Maybe, maybe we'll see uncle Connor in like a dream or something. Yeah. And I hadn't seen him at yeah. all. Like day three of the run, day four of the run, I have a dream and I see, I ha finally have a dream where I'm in a pub with my dad, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not my dad. Yeah. And there's a dude talking and it's my little brother. And my dad is covered in like tattoos that are like royal, like filigree, like mm -hmm. it looks like a king. Yeah. And so I'm having this dream and I'm looking and I look over and it's my brother. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And he goes, oh, me and this guy, we've been friends for a long time. And I pop out of the dream. I'm like, yo, he's with my father, the king. Oh, they've been friends for a long time. That's crazy. Oh, and I'm like, like, just like, oh my gosh, like my brother, he's with the Lord. This is so tight. Like, yeah. and it's the first time I see him. Well, then like the next day, 
I'm in the middle of nowhere and my sister-in-law who's a support team, she goes, hey, there's a couple here. And they brought all these snacks. She says she loves your brother so much. They grew up together and she just wanted to help you. And I'm like, what? So I, I meet this couple and her husband, Zach, is this like rad friend of mine now. But he like ran with me for a day and she made these like cool bumper stickers that were graffiti that my brother used to write oh, and like cool. all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, and so, yeah. Yeah. so I meet this couple and she's just like, I just, I just wanted to help somehow, you know, whatever. Yeah. So that became one of the founders of Pivot. And yep. on that run, he's like, dude, I want to help you somehow. And I, I don't know what to do, but like, I want to help. Yeah. So when they launched this company, he called me, he's like, hey man, we launched a new company. I'll tell you the details at some other point, but we as a company have decided we're going to help run against traffic, which again, we're thinking we can't run. Right. Everything's right. shut down. Yeah, exactly. How, How do we do raise it? enough money yep. when you need millions of dollars? Yep. Oh, how about if God goes, Hey, Tech money, yeah, funding the mission, right? Oh, okay. So that's like how it all came together. Is it felt like we were getting decimated, pressured on all sides. Trafficking goes digital right at the same time. An opportunity for a new social media platform to help fight trafficking shows up in our world, and it just felt like it felt like God was like, "I can put you right at the beginning again. I can put you at the tip of the spear yep. if you want to be there." And so it was such an interesting feeling of like, we felt like we were totally lost yep. and he just put us right back in the fight right when so much of it is online. And so that's kind of like what brought us to this thing. But I would say I'm stoked for the partnership between Run Against Traffic to fund aftercare and the partnership with the new social media platform that isn't these other guys that I'm just like over, I'm over them. Right. Like that's tight, but... You started with the heart thing, and so I would say... I want to I wanted to stop really quick, because I want to add something yeah. to this. This is all amazing stuff, and I want to encourage people that are in the situation where you are at, where you're about to launch. Because I think a lot of people yeah. are in this zone, where they're, they're about to launch this New Year stuff, and all of a sudden coronavirus hits, and all of a sudden they feel like they just kind of lost momentum, wherever they're at. When you're with God, He's mm -hmm. the divine chess player. Yo. He literally, it could feel like you lost everything, but all it takes one second for God to make one move and he could accomplish more than you could accomplish in a hundred years Yo. or 200 years. You know what yes. I mean? So like, as long as you are in tune with God and it feels like he's not working, you just got to trust the process yes. and let, and just keep staying faithful and continue to follow him mm -hmm. wherever he wants to take you. And all he has to do, like you said, hey, I'm going to send these people out to make some treats. And yeah. you're like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. So people are going to come out. This nice lady, she loved my brother. She made yeah. some cool stickers. That's awesome. <laughs> and she got some little snacks. Something that doesn't even look relevant yep. to the situation yep. or, or what it is actually now, this massive app company. Yep. Yep. And I want to tell people that are listening, it's like, you got to be very aware and alert to your surroundings. You can miss the moment. Mm. It could be literally right in front of you because wow. God, as you're telling me the story, I'm just thinking about how God works. Like it may look like it's nothing, but God be, could be making a massive, massive move by, well, just, it's almost like that story of the, the kid that showed up, you know, he had uh, two loaves and two fish oh, I can, and yeah, yeah. there had to be a big miracle Bro. in order to feed. And this, this, this little kid's just like, I got two fish, bro. I got some snacks, bro. I'm right? going to tell you that's been, that was my word over this last season because we feel like, so this is, and I'm, man, I'm so grateful you brought that up. That's totally the Holy ghost, man. The right after that season where we lost the big deal for us was, and I'm saying this because there's a lot of people that feel like it's, it's been hidden. Uh, there's almost like a, a nation of women that are not represented Yep. And there's women all over this country that have miscarriages and they lose pregnancies all the time. And it's like, they don't ever get to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I had no idea how many of my friends had gone through that. Oh yeah. Until yeah. we went yes. through it. And then they're like, yes. dude, we had one two years ago. Oh, we had, and no one talks about it. No. So when we lost, we lost our son, yeah. my son Riggins and Chrissy was close to like 18, 19 weeks. So we, the, so we, wait, you had four miscarriages. So one, one, the first one is Riggins. First one was right after my brother died. And that was more like a pregnancy. It was like eight, nine weeks. Got it. Got it. Then we get pregnant again, and it's like, he's perfect. I got a video of him moving. Really? We did the cannon launch in front of my family. Whoa. I'm thinking, this is, this is why it's so hard. This is gnarly. I'm thinking, that's right, hell. You take a green, we make a green. Mm -hmm. I have my mm -hmm. mom and my, my stepdad. I have my, my stepmom and my dad, who are my brother's parents. They're there. It's a boy. 
right? I'm, we launch it. Everything's perfect. And four days later, he's gone. And I'm like, I have to tell my dad and my stepmom. Oh, no. Like, yeah. so in, in the midst of this, we go through that. And then just it's like months after we get done grieving that. Yeah. We get pregnant again. And it's a girl. And 16 weeks. And then gone again. The heart just stops. Again. Yeah. Per, everything's fine. And then like, no, there's no explanation. And we're just like, what is happening? So in that season of time, and then Chrissy's mom, her mama passes away. So now when we come back to Redlands, it Dude, feels you different guys now. Just went it's like, you guys it's so crazy. And so I remember the, the story. God. I feel like in that time, this is what the, what I feel like God communicated to my heart is what I should say. I, I, the way that I feel like God has given me the, the most mm. has been in, in the, in this story. He, he told me when I first got saved, it was like, you will be mentored by scripture. And, and because I was a bookworm, I would like put myself in every other book I'd read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And oh, when I got talking about that earlier, when yeah. I got saved, it was like, yeah. he's like, you finally found the book that talks back. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Whoa. And so when I started reading, he was like, you're going to find yourself in different characters. Mm -hmm. And here's, what's cool about how I'll teach you. You can be multiple characters in a story. Mm -hmm. And so what he, what he said during that time was, <sighs> there's a, a little boy that brings his lunch to Jesus. And he said, sometimes you're like Christ in that story in that you get to really perform something divine for people. It's all right. God, but it's like right. you get to, you stand in that position where it looks as if you're the dude doing it. Yeah. You, you make something happen that wasn't there. Right. Like you pray for someone and they get healed. Yeah. Right? It's like you get to be Jesus. Sometimes yeah. you get to be um, the disciples where he gives you something and you just distribute it to someone else. Right. Right. Sometimes you get to be the crowd and you're tired and pissed <laughs> and you don't know what's going yeah, on yeah. and you need to sit down. Yeah. Sometimes you're the boy where you bring what you have and Jesus does something with it. Yeah. And then he said, and sometimes you're the lunch. The what? The, the lunch. lunch. And you get shattered. <laughs> and I was like, oh. and he's like, but I always get all the broken pieces at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a puts and and does something right mm -hmm. so i'm like okay so it's just a season where we were just like shattered mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but i but just like you're saying like give it time like i think that what is it uh the when you're patient he said let patience do its thing because mm -hmm. when that happens you'll be mature mm -hmm. you'll be whole mm -hmm. you'll lack nothing mm -hmm. so if you'll just be patient in the launch or in the breakdown God will put all the pieces together in time. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you from like wreckage. Yeah. Dude, yeah, it, it works. Yeah, yeah. So I agree with you. I'm just like, I can't believe you yeah. used that story because yeah. like that was my, that was the word he like, that was the parable. He's like, mm -hmm. you're going to be mentored in this season by this guy. The other thing, that's amazing. And, and one more thing I want to add because we're going to go to break. Oh, we still got a <laughs> little bit of time, but I've, I was just talking about the, in Jeremiah, about the potter at the wheel. Remember when Jeremiah said, or he said to Jeremiah, go down mm -hmm. and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to you there. And he sees the potter and he's breaking down the, the vessel because yeah. it didn't turn out the way he wanted it. And he's breaking it down. And he's going to remold it into a new vessel until he gets it right. And I truly believe when I look back at the seasons of our life, because I went through a very shattering thing in my life in the last, during the coronavirus as well. But I feel like God mm -hmm. uses us as vessels for certain seasons. Mm. Like you're a vessel, like you were a vessel for the lead singer of Sleeping Giant for a while. Yeah. Then he's like, I'm going to break you down. I'm going to remold you and create you in this new wow. vessel for this, this, this traffic project. I'm going to break you down. I'm going to mold you into this new vessel mm. for the, the, was it, um, your other video, uh, your other, um, new album. Holy, oh, Holy Name. Holy Name yeah, project. project yeah. You know, and now for the app, but he's constantly breaking and remolding yeah. us into a vessel because a vessel is almost like a tool for it's for it's for certain use right mm -hmm. every vessel has a certain job but i feel like that's what god does with all of us as christians is wow. he's constantly breaking and molding us into different instruments for different seasons to get j different jobs done but he has to take you through the breaking process sometimes yeah. and it hurts it's painful, Yo. but thank God that the potter has to put water on the hard clay to mold it and shape it. And that's the living water, yeah. the work of the Holy Spirit to transform us and to wow. renew us yeah. for these, for these seasons. So yeah, it's, um, I didn't know you went through that much stuff. That is, 
really, Br- really super brutal. I'm trying to like bring gnarly. it out where it's like, no, like it, it's when you step into mm-hmm. this fight, when you really, yeah. when we, when you really wrestle, man, I, that's what I would say. My heart is like, I thought I understood mm. and, and without an adequate theology mm. for how we are supposed to suffer yeah. and how we are supposed to think of death. I, I think I, I think I took in some answers from church culture that mm. aren't real. Right. Yeah. And I think when the trouble com- comes, mm-hmm. those uh, good sayings don't, don't last. They up don't when, work, bro. Yeah. That, it's like, Oh, I don't have the answers right on this. Yeah. Not even a little bit. And it's not, that's not the point. The yeah. point is, you know, what's, what's really happening. So I'm, I'm grateful for it, but it's been, um, it's been, uh, brutal mm-hmm. and that, and it's real. Like it's, it's been really, really brutal. And how, how long ago was, was all that? Like I, the last you, did one you get, we had was 20, it was in 2020. So, okay. Did you, is she pregnant again or did you, so you went, we like stopped like four and that, yeah, yeah we're like done now. Yeah. So we were just like, I can't do this. And a big part of it was looking at Chrissy Green, who yeah. is just such a gangster, man. Like she's my favorite. She's like my favorite human. And we're just suckers for hope. So we just kept thinking like, it's going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. And at a certain point, she just, she said to me, I, f- I feel foolish for hoping. Yeah. And it was just like, okay, we have to, we have to stop. Yeah. So in God, preaching the gospel, yeah. doing the stuff yeah. and like yeah. feeling lost. Yeah. That's like where we were. Yeah. It's like, dude, I, what? And yeah. so that was our season. Mm-hmm. So in, in, in the midst of it, glorious and crazy opportunities, some of the coolest stuff I've ever mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you about it in terms of like getting to be in a movie with Eric and starting new oh, music yeah, we got and all, all this. Stuff. It's like all, all this okay. cool stuff. Okay. And in the midst of it, yeah. we're being broken yeah. down. Yeah. Like outwardly renewed and inwardly, you're inwardly renewed and outwardly just like good, like Beyond our ability to endure. Is Pe- what the people need to know said. this stuff because they think that going out and like when they could look at your social media from the outside and be like, dude, he's yeah, too, he's doing sick, good, bro. Sick. But really, what's really happening, all the trials and tribulations and the work that God's doing underneath with you yeah. in order to produce those projects, it's you never know mm-hmm. with which, with, with, with what, I can't even say the words, what someone is going through. Yeah. You don't know. And uh, it's it's when you're serving God and you're you're living out your faith, it's not easy. No. I mean, you're gonna see highlights, you're gonna see these mountaintop experiences. Yep. But then also the enemy is there. Right when they come down for that mountain ex- mountaintop experience, Satan was there. Jesus gets baptized, gets filled with the Holy Spirit. He starts fasting and praying in the desert. Satan shows up to him. Mm-hmm. So you're always gonna go through that battle. It's not easy street, but it's all worth it. Yeah, I think so. It's all worth I it. I think so. I, I, but I'm I'm saying that on the trying to come out army crawling our way out of this season and having some things to look forward to, Mm -hmm. but still really reeling from what we needed to like unlearn. Yeah. And not, not really sure. So that, that's what I would say is like, there's a lot of people that I think we tell each other, uh, a lot of like pat answers and we try to like, we try to scripture them down. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of pain that needs to be heard. Just Mm -hmm. needs to be heard, Mm -hmm. acknowledged, seen, when that happens for people in the kingdom, I think we become richer. We fellowship in his sufferings. We can actually engage there. And I think it breeds empathy. So I think we would prefer, you know, the, the easy religiosity. But I think what Jesus is trying to produce in us is an actual connection. Mm-hmm. To, it's, Chrissy said this was the point in 2020. Uh, they did the shofar blowing. They did Rosh yeah. Hashanah or the New Year, whatever. And they blew the shofar out in the street for the first time, and it was the blast was a call to repentance, but it was also a call to stop and listen to the pain of the world. And my little brother Connor would say to my family when they'd be getting crazy, "Hey, be quiet and listen," and it would just kind of like stop everything. That's amazing. So I feel like that's what we need to learn: is let's be quiet and listen to the pain. Cause he's here, but it hurts like that slower thing. And that's, that's where the world's at right now. I was just listening to a radio show today and they were talking about suicides. The number two thing. Why suicide pain, pain, pain is going on. We're going to be going mm. to break right now. Tommy green, mm. plug your social medias, plug your albums, <laughs> let people know where to go to find your stuff. Yeah. Pivot, go to pivot, download the free app right now. I run against traffic.com. Holy name, sleeping giant, Chrissy green. 
Connor Get, Green forever. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in two minutes right after the break. Peace. Yo. More of the Ryan Reese Show coming up. Post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook. So we've been here in California and the pandemic shut everything down. Around the world, people are afraid and on edge. I thought it'd be a good opportunity for the whosoever's to be active and doing ministry in this time right now. Since everything's shut down, Idaho's open, so that means we can give the gospel out and reach as many people as possible. We came up with 10,000 flyers, 100 posters, and I just charged it to Idaho. Every whosoever's trip is completely insane. Life changing. Guns, God, fireworks, <laughs> the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going down. Skateboarding. I missed it. He came up to me and he's like, dude, what happened tonight was crazy. I've been to youth group, I've been to church, but I've never experienced what happened tonight. And I said, shut your mouth, dude, okay? And I said, wait till the camera gets here. <laughs> Yeah, now I went from tour mode to daddy duty, so this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> You're like, why am I here? Why am I going through this? Why is this happening? Sometimes there's not answers to that. During this time of coronavirus, when everything's been put on pause, a lot of people were left to look in the mirror of asking themselves, who am I? Who am I without school, sports? you know, social media, friends, and all of these hobbies. God cares about the smallest details because he has a plan and he has a purpose for everyone's life. That's the message we share with the youth of the nation and of the world. He loves you and he has a plan for every detail of your life. And if you're willing to step out by faith, well, you're gonna watch God do the impossible. Keep coming, this is awesome. This is awesome, this is why I came. We're saying there's best trick contest happening. The city doesn't know, no one knows. We don't even know if we're gonna get shut down. But as far as I'm concerned, came up with the idea, God confirmed, so I just left and we went to Idaho. Same place, not again. Ooh, and down, and no now, back. To the Ryan Reese Show. Ooh, All right, we are back in the studio with Tommy Green, the lead singer of Sleeping Giant. I told you, download their albums. You won't regret <laughs> it. And you got Holy Name, which is a new worship album. Yeah, new project. Which is amazing. Thanks, new bro. project, yeah. Uh, before we, uh, we're going to go into a couple of other things. Let's talk about the uh, that new worship project or the new uh, yeah. music project. So it's me and my friend Joe. His name's Joe Holt. Um, one of the Rev kids that's just like a dear friend. He writes all this music. I've, I've wrote all these worship songs. Wait, Rev, that's a whole other music project too. No, Rev's just like our ministry that the squad? Okay. of like a whole bunch of people all okay. over the place. Okay. So Joe and his wife, Shauna, uh, live in Minnesota. And I don't know, he's just a little death core kid that's like yeah. awesome. And so I had all these like acoustic songs I've written over the years. And to be honest with you, going through the time of like all the down that we were in, I, I literally felt like, I'm going to send you these songs during the, during the Corona lockdown, we had said as a crew, I was yeah. like, why don't you guys all just write whatever's on your heart towards the Lord right now? And we'll make like a Corona mixtape and we'll just put it out for our community. Epic. Right. And they were like, cool. But then everyone's like, so like scattered and uh -huh. pressured. And I'm like, dude, we got to go. So <laughs> I borrow, so I, I told my brother-in-law, Aaron, his name is Aaron Craner. Um, he's one of my favorite worship people ever. He's like, not of this era. He's cool. like a he's like a country western guy. He's like he's like a singer songwriter for real, but he mm -hmm. loves Jesus. And yeah. I was like, let me steal one of your songs. And he's like, okay. I was gonna steal it and put it on the last Sleeping Giant record, and we ran out of time. And I was yeah. like, dude, but everyone needs to hear this chorus. And he's yeah. like, okay. And so um, I stole "Fall on Your Knees" and I sent it to Joe, and I was like, hey, can we make this heavy? And he's like, yeah. So he started making this song heavy, and then I just sent him some other like songs I had written on the guitar. And said, do you just want to do some of these? Like, we could just turn these into heavy songs. I've yeah. had them for like eight years. Yeah. And again, like, you, we were just talking in the break. Like, during the time where we were going through all this actual, like, traumatic experiences. Right. 
I remember telling Chrissy, we would sit in our backyard a lot. We'd sit on these little swings. Our little kids were just like playing. My son's doing video games. And we would just sit and look at each other like shell shocked, just looking like what is happening. And I told her, I know God is going to be good to us. Yeah. I know I will watch him be kind and it doesn't give me my son back and it doesn't right. bring my brother back right. and I don't know what to do. And we were, I like felt like I'm praying and I can see you be good and I can't feel anything. Like, and I was like a sensor. I could, I could feel and I, I couldn't feel anything. I couldn't, mm-hmm. it's like I'd talk and it'd be silent. Like I, yep, yep. I could see it, but I couldn't experience him yep. in any way. Like it, it just was so sucky. And, yeah. and Chrissy yeah. and me both are just looking at each other like, where are we? Like, we're like banner wavers. We're like the people that a lot of people would say, like, look at their faith. They do exactly. a good job. And, yep. and we're looking at each other like, yeah. We have nothing right now. Yeah. And so I almost felt like I was taking these songs I'd written like eight years ago and just putting them in front of me and trying to hang on to them to pull me back to what I used to feel because I couldn't feel. And so with Holy Name, it was me sending these songs to this this dude who was like a little brother. Almost, he was almost like a son in the faith, a little bit, just family, this younger kid and saying, can, do you want to do anything with these? And he's like, yeah. And he's sick. And so he'd do these renditions and send them back to me. And I'd be like, bro, these are awesome. And then I'd sing on them. And, and it was just me and Joey. Like, it was like, we're just doing this thing. And so it's, it's helped keep me alive. Yeah. 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 And a lot of it is written from a former season. It was when I was in love. Right. And now I'm like numb, like, Uh man, I I used to really feel like this. And so that's kind of where (laughs) Holy Name was. And so it's, we put out a couple songs by ourselves and then JD from Face Down like messaged me and was like, Hey, do you guys have any more? And I was like, uh, yeah, we have a few, you know? And so we got signed and, um, we're just putting out singles until we get to like a full length. And I believe we're going to have a full length out first or second quarter of this next year. And it's really just been similar to going on Instagram live. The minute we went into lockdown, I felt like yeah. I wanted to encourage people because yeah. I was just yeah. watching all this bad news. And I yeah. felt like, bro, let's stay focused, even though I don't even know what to do. So I went like, let's just try. So maybe it's just a bridge to help people through this last time, but I'm grateful for it. The The sound of holy name, I'm grateful for what we're, what we're putting out. And um, hopefully it helps give people some more encouragement while the next group of young kids are coming up from wherever they're yeah, coming up. Like, uh-huh. I just can't wait to yeah. see what that next wave is going to look like. Um, but in the meantime, we just did that. So Holy Name is more like praise or devotion or worship, Yeah, you know, and yeah. it's more like singy than it is like heavy, but yeah. It's still pretty stinking heavy. It's, for he- sure. it's heavy. It's heavy. It's still heavy. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. You know, I don't, I, when I was talking to you, you're like, yeah, you know, it has some pretty singing stuff on it. So I turn around, I'm like, this is still heavy. <laughs> Yeah, it's still a thing. That's a that's Joe. Joe's like, dude, I want you to be able to like worship, you know, and like we can do worship, but then I just want to like kick walls. And I was yeah. like, okay, tight. That's so no, tight. It's, it's we amazing. should do that. Well, hey, you guys could go download that too yeah. as well. So yeah. Well, you, what, uh, so you're still uh, putting out songs for it, or is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We right now we're kind of in this lag where we we have a few that are getting sent back and forth between the producer and us, and we're we're gonna get everything over to JD. So I don't. I, we might release one more before the full length comes mm-hmm. out. Or we might just make people wait for another month or two. Are then, you gonna perform it live? I don't know, man. It's so like theatrical and like beautiful to mm-hmm. me that it. I need like a choir of twenty people, and I need like I need a it. It ha, it'd be a s- experience, and I, I don't know if we could. I I don't trust myself to pull it off well, so. I don't know, but yeah. I would love to. I'd love let's to watch it. people sing. Let's it. how's it here? Do it. <laughs> we got we got a good we got a good side we got a good sound system. Remember, and. yo, you remember when we played here? <laughs> yeah. And my homie Charles Jones showed up. Do you remember him? He's a piano prodigy. He yeah, came yeah, yeah. up on stage, and started singing with us. He um he's my favorite. I would have him sing in Holy Name for sure. He would be so tight. I, I do remember uh, when you were here. We actually got um we got barricades. <laughs> they were actually at Diamond Bar, uh, Calvary Temple Diamond Bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had barricades, um, and we had a full-on pit. There was a little, like, a full-on pit. And it's funny because I saw all the pastors and stuff here because they're, they're, everyone here, my dad's radical. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It, a pit, whatever, it's all good. Um, but when uh, I, then I seen some girl, I think it was someone that was connected to Sonny, one of their friends, 
uh, this girl, she got up on stage and she did a stage dive. Yes. And she dove and all the kids, she's, you know, she's like a, a little bit uh, older, larger girl and uh, jumped off and all the kids moved. moved. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh no. Dude, yeah, Dude. right to her floor. She got broke off. And they're like, Dude, did you see that girl jump off? I'm like, who? And then it ends up, I was telling the story and it was one of Sonny's friends. She was like, that was me. I'm like, how <laughs> could you jump off these poor little kids? But Nine, then nine got, year old kids just, oh no. But what I, what I love, exactly. <laughs> and then I love the fact that uh, I always tell this story where every time you're on the, the, the show is that you did that, you did uh, that one worship song at the end and dude, all the pastors and all like the leadership here were just blown away yeah. because they've never seen at a hardcore show. Cause they saw the pit, people jumping, people having the time of their life. Everyone's excited, yeah. you know? Yeah. But then at the end, uh, was it, was the, the praise, oh, praise him. Oh, praise yeah, him. Yeah. yeah. You start playing that song and literally Dude, all the older pastors and people were like, that was incredible. Whoa. They're like, that was, and they just kept worshiping and they were like, that was like the talk around here. Cause we've done a lot of concerts here. Wow. But that was the talk around this church. Like, man, that we'd never seen so many young people, all these hardcore kids just worshiping yeah. in this church. And it was packed. Yeah. It was packed with thousands of people and, and they were uh, blown away and, and they were like, we didn't know. And what was blown away to them is they're like, we didn't know. That you could worship like that. You could do that. Yeah. And exactly. that was such yeah. a that's the, radical. That's the and they've always been mm. behind what we've done here. But what you guys did here with that song that night, mm. it was such a. That's cool. It's just awesome. I'm all choked up right now. <laughs> thinking about it. But it's just awesome now. The Holy Spirit does that kind of stuff. He just <laughs> breaks through. And you can't put God in a box. No. You know what I mean? No. It's, it's true. If you're truly yeah. worshiping him, it doesn't matter how you're worshiping mm. him. And God showed up in a powerful way. So. <laughs> Thank you for that. It was awesome. Yeah, that was tight. Well, we have 16 minutes left. We're all crying over here. <laughs> I don't know, man. What do you want to? What do you want to talk about? <laughs> yeah, dude, that's tight. It's good. Well, um, what do, what do I want to talk about? Brian was yelling at me last night. I oh yeah, to, so I have you to did keep an saying that. Head. I did an interview with head last night, so I have to keep saying this. Everyone, please stop what you're doing right now. Go to the app store. Download oh, yeah. Pivot for free. Yeah. Our goal yeah. is to get a hundred thousand downloads so oh, that yeah. Pivot. So that Pivot will write a check to Run Against Traffic's yes. foundation for a hundred thousand. I'm just trying to get a big Happy Gilmore size check. Let's okay, yes. <laughs> so listen, let's do that, everyone. Go for, download right now. If you're listening to this podcast, push pause. Yeah. Go download it. If you're on the radio, pull Pivot. over. Pivot. P Y V O T T. Show to this camera over here. Pivot. This guy. P Y V O T T. Yeah. Get yeah. it. Download Looks it. Just like that. Hey, let's let's actually talk about this. So, yes. so what should we expect on this app? So right now it looks a lot like your Instagram timeline. Okay. The, the, so it's gonna look. It's gonna be a social media platform. Total to social media platform. And yeah. and have it house yeah, a one stop shop. V videos and um. Well, here's what I'll say. Here's the, here's the free speech or what? Yes. Okay. Good. Th the point is, um. When this thing is as fully formed, what it'll, what, it, how it will function is, and the, the culture is, you're in charge of you, yeah. I'm in charge of me. Yeah. There's not going to be the same corporate agenda, left, right, or center. Like, it's just, it's like, we put the power of social media back in your hands. So say, I like you and you like me, yeah. and you like my kids, and you like pictures of me with the band, but I'm like pro- Republican, I'm pro Democrat, I'm yeah. a Christian, I'm an anti Christian, whatever. Yeah. It's like the way this will look is essentially like you see a picture of me in Sleeping Giant and you'll swipe right. I like that picture. Yeah. See a picture of me with my wife and family, swipe right. See some picture of me like yada, 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 yeah. whatever it is, you swipe left and the algorithm goes, oh, you don't like that. Right. I like everything else, but I just don't want to see that. So it just focuses it. Okay. Yeah, it's like, yo, and then it says, okay, so when it comes to Maybe their politics stuff, less of that. Right. But you still want to stay connected. You still want to sell. It's yes. like, how do we do real relationship? It's like, oh, I like this stuff. Maybe I just don't like that as much. But instead of blocking it, and it's like a conversation. You and like when you meet, when, like, I have one of my friends I'm, I, I do uh, this footwear with up in LA, he, we'll be talking, and he's not, he's not a politic guy. Mm -hmm. So we talk about everything else, but we don't do the politic thing. Yeah. Right. So it's just really, it's just, how do we stay connected, man? Yeah. It's, it, it, it's trying to imitate how stuff actually goes down. How it actually works. How it actually works. And that way yeah. people can get back to why they got onto social media in the first place, which dude, at its best, it's so tight to see like dope photos of stuff and the world gets bigger. You get to see your friends from all over the country and say yeah. happy birthday, you celebrate stuff like 
So if you like Twitter more than IG, you can customize your timeline for just words. If you like pictures more, you can do just pictures. I if like you, it. You want to add a song in your background and a video in your back. Like you get to customize it. So we're trying to put all the control back in the hands of the user. And our job is to facilitate a, a beautiful experience. But then for brands and social media influencers or shows yeah. or whatever. It's yeah. like the, the, the thing that I think is actually going to set it apart is customizable feeds. So if you follow the Ryan Reese show on Facebook, yeah. um, he puts an ad out. There's a very good chance it's going to get buried in the algorithm yeah. or he's going to have to pay a bunch of money for all of the people that actually want to follow you to right. even see it. Right. Well, with pivot, you can build a customizable feed that just is hashtag the Ryan Reese show. Yeah. And everyone that opts into that feed will see all of your stuff. Perfect. You don't have to pay to play. Right. So yeah, we're trying yeah. to change the game for people that want to do their work online. Right. So they don't have to compete in the same way. And so we're, without cluttering up all the stuff, it's like you can, it's why TikTok is winning in a lot of ways is you could be nobody from nowhere mm -hmm. and you could still make a splash. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so organic reach is still a thing. Yep. The functionality is still a thing. And we're at the beginning of this really cool journey. So, so the, when did it launch? It launched. Does, we're at the end of the soft launch right now. Like we okay. started September Really, like, I think we're going to be closer to all the functionality that we want over the next month or so. Oh, so cool. everyone that logs in, it's like, you're at the beginning of the journey. Yeah. For all intents and purposes, you could take the last 20 Instagram posts you put and just put them on Pivot. Or what I've been telling people is make it different. Like Sleeping yeah. Giants Pivot account is going to be a memory wall for the fans. Cool. As opposed to just like, hey, buy our shirt. It's like, yeah. no, 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 like you guys share with us your favorite stuff. That's and that's cool. going to be like, like that. the place. So if you've got something you haven't done in other social media spaces, yeah. try it out here. Like we want it to be special. Yeah. I, I just don't want it. I want it to be beautiful. I want it to make people happy. Yeah. And so I just think there's all these people who are like, they're stuck doing it one kind of way. Yeah. So come and, you know, I like that, make it a little different. So, you know, if you, if you do stuff, photography, video, if you just feel like you've been lost because there's all these other people and you're at the back of the line, you can begin again here. So when we've talked to brands and, and influencers and people that see it, they're so pumped because they're like, this, this really, this is a good thing. And we're like, yeah, for sure. Talking with like companies and marketing people and influencers that want to put stuff out. Pivot. That's a, that's like a skate. Uh, name. Yeah, I know. It looks like it looks dope. I'm like a big fan. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty tight, bro. There it is, dude. Plus, um, it's fun to play with. Plus, I don't know. I just feel like people use it all the time. Yeah. They say it all the time in their language. Now, yeah. when it comes up, I'm like, see, like uh, that's it's the pivot. time. Yeah, yeah, it's like, well, you know, then we just had to pivot and we had to do that. And I'm like, yeah, you did. That's right, yeah. you did. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I so, like it. We're gonna we're gonna get the whosoever set up. It'd be I'll, really I'll talk cool. To Lucas, we'll get that going. Yeah, make it cool. I don't know what other things, and I would say that like totally honestly, like there's ways that it has to work in other spots, but take your time. And we talk with some homies that do uh, off road and racing stuff. Yeah, um, amazing friends of mine, and they're I mean they're kind of a big deal. And they were like, bro, I wish sometimes I could go back and kind of start my stuff over. And we were oh, like, yo, got it, got it. he's like, we have all these old school like raw footage photos of ours and like really raw video and i'm like why don't you just do that here like you're doing everything else other places because then ben, then that's going to make people want to go to that section yeah we want to do different. exclusive stuff it's right. like if you did exclusive, if not why leave instagram what yeah, yeah because and people talk all the well i just wish we it's like we'll leave yeah right it's yeah. like okay well now put your money where your mouth is man yeah. you're all tired of the yeah. the big dogs over here telling you what to do it's like yeah. we'll do something yeah but now we're trying to give people a, a chance but i would just say for people that are yeah. curating Make make the whosoever space. Yeah. Make make your show space. Make it like special. Do yeah. do something fun there. You know, yeah. take your time. Like, we have time. We're gonna disrupt this whole thing. It's gonna yeah. be awesome. So I like it. Okay, sick. Yeah. All right. Well, hey. So at the end of the show, since we have ten minutes left, oh, we do. Yeah. How do you want to encourage people? Um, mm. How do you want to encourage people that are going through? You know, everything that we've been talking about on the show. We know that. Since the coronavirus hit, it disrupted everything. It literally put a stop to a lot of people's projects. I mean, think about the musicians. I have a musician that just launched, um, she just launched her album and she was on tour. And I think she was like four tour dates in and then had to be sent home. I mean, how many people yeah. with her launch? But let's not talk about people with their business projects or yeah. their restaurants or their, yeah. you know, barber shops or who knows, you know. Who knows what everyone was doing, some kind of launch, and all of a sudden everything got put on hold. And mm -hmm. a lot of people lost a lot of stuff. Or they found themselves, you know, in fights with their husband and their wife, or wow. stuck at home with their kids, or depression came in, their addiction levels went back up, 
They got they got introduced to suicide and depression because of life circumstances. People that are just in a place that need hope. What would you say to them and what can they do yeah. to get out of this rut? Yeah, I would say two things. So two things right off the top. The first is <laughs> um, people are really traumatized. It, trauma lands in a weird place. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this as like a person that deals with traumatized humans or deals in that space. Like the mm -hmm. friends that you have, it's mm -hmm. slave to nothing. And any of these other people, it's like, dude, people that are really hurting do very strange things. Right. So if you're in trauma, get help. Like there's help out there. And I, my homie, Joe Dennis is like an amazing trauma therapist and he loves the Lord. And this is what he says. His favorite book in the Bible is Ecclesiastes. And he says, because, and the dude that deals with heavy duty stuff, right. he says, yeah, he says, because ultimately like, you know, life is kind of meaningless. He mm -hmm. said, but here's the beauty. God has given us essentially the ability to create meaning. Mm. And like, I think it's like Ephesians, the eyes of our understanding, that ability in human, our soul, this gift, this image bearing gift that God gives us the ability, gosh, to reflect something. We, we get to decide what things mean. And so if you have a hard time finding meaning right now, mm -hmm. understand that you are hardwired to create meaning, even where there's none. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's that same muscle that hurts us is the same muscle that actually we flip the script on and then we can create healing out of those same things. So I would say get help. The second thing is you need to know that we are humans and we are designed to stay connected, mm -hmm. but we suck at it, bro. Mm -hmm. And we were not taught how to connect. So I would say talk to some of my friends are Dr. Glenn and Phyllis Hill, and they have a book called The Connection Codes mm -hmm. about the science of how God made us to connect. Mm -hmm. And we are disconnected. We don't know how to actually remain connected when we're flooded with fear and hurt, shame and loneliness and panic. Mm -hmm. And so there's help out there. That's what I'd say mm -hmm. first off. Mm -hmm. But um, what I think you said something earlier for the people that are in the midst of this and they don't know what to do, you said... As you were talking, I'm just watching, like, how did God move? I'm thinking, how is God moving? Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of people that are under the pressure of, like, I thought it was going to work. Yeah. And now, yeah, yeah. I think collaborate. Mm -hmm. Look for who you can help. Look mm -hmm. for who you can partner with. Look for who is available. Because I think some of this stuff, like, we get so locked into, like, it's supposed to look like this. Yeah. And yeah. then, bam, and now we're like. We have to yeah. we have to create something new, mm -hmm. and so I would say if you can create a new story, what the the real word I could tell you this is like this I got two words of the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first was about the little boy with his lunch, and the second one was connected to um, the story where Jesus basically says, you know, if if you don't if you don't likewise repent, you too will perish, mm -hmm. and so. <clears throat> I like those two words. They're pretty crazy. Like <laughs> this was the story that I, this is what I had though. So yeah. I'm thinking of the story. If you don't repent, right, right. To change your thought about a thing, to change your direction about yeah. a thing, you will perish. You will, you'll waste, you'll burn, you know, that, that, the imagery. And so this is what I felt like the Holy Spirit said in that time. <sighs> if you don't change your mind, you will waste your time. Mm. If you don't, if, if you don't change the way you're thinking, you will burn up this opportunity. Mm. But then what it, when it like really got diluted down, it was you can have your story or you can have your future and you do not get them both. Mm. And so for a lot of people, they have a really bad story happening mm -hmm. about all this stuff right now. Mm -hmm. And God is giving us the ability to repent, to change our mind. This is the greatest moment of my whole life. I'm alive today. Anything is possible. I believe God. Any of these things are just as true as, this is so stupid. I was about to start a tour. No, I can't even do it. Or my business is down. Or like, I'm losing all this money. Or like, God, I hate being at my house. Like, mm -hmm. you got a crappy story, man. You better, yeah. you can drop that story and have the future. Or you can stay in your story. But that was like this correction that came to me was God was like, in the midst of all the death. It's like I, I truly believe, as you're talking, I, I really believe that he... Uh, he it's, it's funny, the name, Pivot. <laughs> yeah. He's literally pivoting people for a new work on mm -hmm. what he's going to be doing now because the world has changed. Yes. 
the world is, it's, you know, I want everything to go back to normal. Um, it's not going to go back to normal. Yo. Because the normal, that's not, that doesn't exist anymore. Wow. Um, peep, why? Because people have, their whole mentality has changed. They've been programmed by media. Yep. You know, we could go on about the fear and the, you know, mm. people are scared of their shadows and all this stuff. And people are get, to getting jabbed and all those different things mm -hmm. in their body. And who knows how much that bo your body can take until you fall apart. Yo. Or is the, is the stuff even working? People are still getting the virus. Mm -hmm. So with all that said, without getting into all those details, sure, people's minds are like, do I get it? Do I not get it? Is it going to hurt me? Did it hurt me? Yeah. But if I get it, it's not working. My friend just got the... the so the world is not going to go back to normal anytime soon. You could see the no. government, they're trying to fix it, yeah. but it's not getting fixed. Mm. So the world that we've known and the mentality is not going to be the same. So God, we have to see what God wants to do in our life now so we can we could, uh, be available to be used at these times because yeah. it's going to be a different work. Yeah. The way we do ministry yes. and the way we live our lives, it's yeah. going to be different. And, you know, like, I, you know, oh. I'm in Idaho right now. Like, no one wears masks. Okay. So it's normal. It's normal when it looks like on that level. But the mentality no, inside, there's still, there, there's still yep. stuff going on God, that's in, really the, in the world. No, it's true, man. Like, but, but we have to, we can't look like it's going to go back to normal. Like, God's repositioning. Yeah. He's repositioning his church and people to do a new move of the spirit, a new work, a new revival, but it's going to be different. It's not going to be done the way, yeah. you know. Well, I would say too, you know, we have a, we have a, we have a picture. We, oh, have, we have one minute and 50 seconds. Yeah. Left. We have a picture in scripture. Here's what it is. Yeah. You're stepping out on the water. You're, if you're walking with Christ, you're already walking in a miraculous way. Right. If you look down at the ocean, you will sink. Right. If you look up and catch the eyes of Christ in this moment, yes. he will direct you where you're supposed to go. So you can be fascinated with the chaos right. or you can be fascinated with Christ. And I think if we, if we intend to look at him or stay focused on him in your day to day life, you will, you will end up preserving peace. Like I said, you know, keep your mind in perfect peace when you're set on him. Yep. Um, I sent that to Fixed Austin. Yep. And Good. so, so just think about that for people. I like the idea of if he's doing all this, you can be focused on the chaos or you can stay focused on Jesus. You can stay focused on the practice of looking for him. Yeah. And if you do that, I think you're going to make it through. And you might look like this miraculous story, but it's not about, you're it's just not keeping about your that. Just Jesus. keep your eyes on him. That's yeah. It. So I like what you're saying. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah. That is definitely amazing. And that is definitely a good note to close the show <laughs> with. Keep your eye on Jesus, Please. no matter what. Don't be fascinated. You could see the storm. Yep. Yeah, we see the unrest, mm -hmm. but that's not important because he is the king. Mm -hmm. He is the Messiah. He calls the shots. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes on him, and we are his masterpiece, and we have to go after our future, not our story. Yes. Can't live in the past because you're not going that direction. Mm -hmm. You're going forward, and he knows where you're going because the word is the lamp to our feet, and he yeah. will lead and guide us. All right, Tommy, thank you. Tommy Green, Bro, thank lead, you. Sling, lead, lead, slinger, lead singer lead singer of Sleeping Giant. Yes, thank you. Get Pivot, the app, yes. and download all of his albums. <laughs> I love you, man. Thank you for being love on, you man. Too. Thank you very much. All right, brother. Peace. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for The Ryan Reese Show.